welcome to Set Up and Score with ScoreUp.com. My name is Rebecca Hollis and I'm going to be walking you through today the process of setting up your scorecard with lots of examples and best practices. So today we are going to cover six of the key areas of setting up your scorecard and generating lots of lovely leads. Now we're gonna look at the overall concept of your scorecard and the hook to get people to actually want to take your scorecard, really highly effective landing pages, questions, categories, and your lead form, which is where you actually collect the data, results page and call to action. So what do you have on your results page and what is a very, very strong, clear call to action? Um, how do we actually promote our scorecard? And then finally, and some would say most importantly, how to actually convert these leads into sales. So people can only pay for value that they recognize. So marketing and sales must be hyper-personalized to each person to really demonstrate the value that your business will bring. The challenge is making sure that you're able to do this quickly, cost-effectively, and at scale. So scorecard or quiz marketing is able to really identify where someone is at point A, so this is where they are, this is the problem that they want to solve or the desire that they want to achieve, and then point B, which is where they want to be, the problem resolved or the desire actually achieved. And it's that little bit in between, it's that gap in between that creates the tension that people naturally seek to resolve. So. Let's look at our overall concept and our hook. So the concept is the idea of your scorecard. Now this is based around that desire that your ideal customer wants to achieve or a problem that they really want to solve. So when we're talking about your scorecard concept, we're talking about the idea and this can really anchor you as you're going through, through the process of setting up your scorecard. So once you have your scorecard concept, you then wanna have a really fantastic hook and your hook is your headline. Now this grabs people's attention and it alludes to the promise of what you're actually going to deliver. And like any headline, you only really have a couple of seconds, a very short time to grab somebody's attention. So we wanna make sure that this is really, really good. It's really punchy and someone goes, yes, I absolutely have to take this scorecard. To give you an example, Karen Dwyer, she is a fantastic MS coach. She had MS herself um, and went on to be incredibly, incredibly successful with it, um, really curing herself from it. And now she helps other people. So her concept, the idea of her actual scorecard is that she wants to help people to understand where they are on their MS journey and her hook. So the headline is, are you ready to have success with MS? And that is obviously a huge desire of people that are suffering with MS. It's something that they really, really want to achieve. So what are some best practices for scorecard concepts? So when we are looking at the desire or we're looking at the goal that they want to achieve, some examples are a key person of influence scorecard. So people want to be key people of influence in their in their industry, they're very influential, they're the types of people that get all the business, that would make a fantastic scorecard. High performing team scorecard, people want to have very effective and high performing teams. Um, beach ready scorecard, everybody wants to get ready to go on holiday, beach ready, um, that would be a very, very good scorecard for people in the health industry. And good parenting scorecard, so this is really, this is great, people want to be great, fantastic parents, they want to better themselves, this would be a a really good scorecard. And looking at pain and frustration, avoid being hacked scorecard. You wanna protect yourself from the, from the hackers online. So that is really good if you are looking at B2B in particular. Um, fitness injury prevention. So athletes wanna make sure that they're not getting injured, that they're doing all the best things. So a fitness prevention, injury prevention scorecard would be great. Weight gain prevention. <laughs> so what are the things that you need to do to not continuously gain, gain weight? And avoid burnout scorecard. People do not want to be to be burning out. They want to have um, structures and stresses in place to prevent that. 
So some great examples of hooks. Can you lose weight in the next 30 days? That's really good, that hook, because it's saying, can you? It's giving you like, it's asking you a question based on taking this quiz. Can you lose weight in the next 30 days? And it's also putting a time frame on there. So it's giving that, that bit of urgency. Discover your growth mindset score. People are obviously really interested in bettering themselves in personal development. Finding out your growth mindset score is a great place to start. And could you be the next Amazon best-selling author? For those budding authors out there, everyone wants to be a bestseller. So this is a really great one for publishers, people in the publishing industry. When we look at weak hooks um, and some of the mistakes that we actually see people make, just some examples. Do you need a marketing agency? Find out by taking this quiz. It's very much saying to that person that's just come to your quiz landing page, it, you're, you're trying to get me to take this quiz for you, for your business. And it's not so much for me. Um, so maybe rewording that a little bit differently so it's not, it doesn't seem like you're just going to get them through the scorecard and instantly start selling to them. Find out if your team's performing based on the three-step method by John, the greatest man in the world. Now, this one here is an example of someone that is just really talking about themselves and how amazing their business it is and trying to get that um, out as quickly as possible. The scorecard on the landing page, we really want to make it about them. So they want to take the scorecard. We want to, we want them to want to take the scorecard. So it should be all about them. So talking about yourself and how amazing your three-step method is right away, right off the back in your, in your hook, um, isn't really going to convert people to your quiz. Um, and then if LinkedIn is a minefield and you want to learn where you're going wrong, then take this quiz to discover. It's just too much, too text heavy. It's not quick. It's not punchy enough. Um, uh, people will not read everything. Um, you can shrink that right down because that's that actually is a very good in general concept. Um, but you can shrink that that right down. So just to summarize, hooks are great hooks, need to be punchy, they need to be strong and straight to the point, no fluff. Um, it's about them, it's not about you, and it really needs to speak to a desire or a pain that your ideal customer has. I wanted to give you some really good examples from our amazing users that are using Scorecard and have been testing it um, and had really great success. So RT Fitness, uh, their one is fantastic. Are you ready to transform? They've really highlighted by using the picture on there, people that have actually transformed their bodies. Are you ready to transform is an amazing hook because people really want to know if they are they're, they're ready to, to get the body that they've always wanted or the health that they've always desired. The Powerful Leaders Scorecard, discover your personal brand. Uh, this agency is all about personal brand. That's a, that's a really, really strong hook. People do want to discover what their personal brand score is. This gives them a really good starting point. And how accountable are you? Um, so Darren Finkelstein, who is the owner of Tick Those Boxes of, of this scorecard, he actually created his scorecard and in his first 30 days of his free trial, he generated 60,000 uh, Australian dollars um, for his business. And how he did with that is he actually sent it out to all his, cu his current uh, client base, but also he created a few ads. And if you see the, the picture on there, the lady crossing her fingers, he actually used that picture on an ad. So when someone clicked through from the ad that said, take your scorecard, this picture was also on the landing page. So it had that, it made people feel when they clicked from say Facebook to the landing page of this quiz, it felt trustworthy, it felt legit, rather than completely different branding to the, the scorecard. But he's done a fantastic job and how accountable are you is a really, really great hook. Are you elite marriage material or, or are you elite material? So these are great for people that are single. Instantly, you're going to want to know if you are, if you have all the attributes that would make you um, great elite material. You would find a partner and get married. Of course, this is a dating agency. So they've got really straight to the point and they get thousands of people click their scorecard every single month and they are getting lots of data on all the people that are coming through, which is incredible incredibly helpful for them for filtering through and matching people up. 
So we have gone over concept, which is the overall idea of your scorecard, and then the hook, which is what's going to get them super interested. We now wanna look at giving them some more information to really get them over the line to taking your scorecard. And this is with the landing page. So the landing page is the very first thing that people will see. This is the equivalent to the homepage on your website, the big hero piece, and it really sells your scorecard and gets people to want to take it. It gives them more information and they are able to really understand what your scorecard is and what you're going to be able to deliver. What value will you be able to bring? So the only job of the landing page is for them to take your scorecard. Now this is not a place to add extra links to other places and it's certainly not a place to start selling or to talk about yourself. So the only real job of the landing page is to get them to take your scorecard and to get them through the quiz. So selling and creating credibility around your expertise is for the results page at the very, very end. So only job of the landing page is to get them to take your scorecard. Couple of best practices for really high converting landing page. We wanna make sure that we've got really clear, credible and interesting copy. There is so much to be said for the copy. You can have a fantastic looking um, scorecard. You can have amazing questions. You can be so knowledgeable on your results page. But if your copy is not really, really strong, if it's not looking its best, um, and then if, if it's really not saying what the scorecard will, will provide and the value that it will bring, people won't take your scorecard. So making sure that you make this really punchy and easy to understand. You could also maybe get a copywriter to have a look over it um, once you've completed it. Um, also stating the time investment. So some people, when they click on take the scorecard and it pops up with their form that they have to fill in, they sort of are like, oh, do I really have time for this? But if you actually put, this will take 60 seconds or you will get your score in under 60 seconds or within just two minutes, you, you will reveal you know, your score and um, all of these amazing things or next steps or tangible insights. So making sure that you are very clear on what the time investment will be for that person that can really get them over the line um, and to be really clear on what they're actually going to get from the scorecard so you're going to get a score you're going to get some tangible results you might get some bonuses etc etc so be really clear on what the prize is actually going to be they want to make sure that if they're going to invest their time they know what they're going to get at the other end i'm um, also making sure that you've got great fluid branding now we have amazing templates on scoreapp.com that have been created and pre-populated for you. But we wanna make sure that your branding and, and everything is actually um, included in your scorecard so it flows and it's fluid um, with your business. So making sure that as you're going through and as you're editing these templates or as you're creating your scorecard, making sure that every section is really the same, the colors are the same, the text is the same, the fonts are the same. So making sure you've got lovely fluid branding so people know who you are and they recognize you. Now, Adding a photo and a bio. Now this is really only for coaches and trainers that are the face of their company. So, you know, if you are a brand, if you're BMW, you don't wanna be putting um, someone in your team up there and doing a bio on them. It's really about, um, it's about the person taking your scorecard. But if your business is really about you, so if you are a personal trainer, it might be quite nice to put your picture up there and just a very short bio as to why you're credible to be writing this, this scorecard. So. Think about the photo and a bio only if you are the face um, of your company. And testimonials. Now we have testimonials up there that you can put on your landing page and you can also put it on your results page as well. But there are two different ways that you need to look at it depending on where you're putting your testimonial. On your landing page, you wanna make sure that the testimonials are about the scorecard. So I took this scorecard and I understood X, Y, and Z or I took this scorecard and it really helped me achieve this goal. So it's all about the scorecard. We wanna get people to want to take the scorecard. At the moment, they're not, they don't really know what your business is. So if you put, um, 
you know, I work with Sandy and she, you know, increased my business by, you know, a million pounds a year, which would be amazing. Um, but she, unfortunately, they're not, that doesn't flow. That's that they're not in that headspace right now. They're in the headspace of how is this amazing quiz going to help me? So making sure that the testimonials are very focused towards, I took this scorecard and this is what I got. And then offering offers and bonuses. So if you feel that it might be harder to get your audience over the line, because ScoreRap is um, a very, we accommodate very service-driven industries, lots of different, lots of different companies in different sectors. So there's loads and loads um, of of, uh, different people that need different things and different audiences. So maybe your audience might just need a little extra sweetener to help them over the line. So offering things such as bonuses, you could offer a free copy of your book or a Kindle copy of your book. You can offer potentially like a a private Facebook group, a ticketed event. So take this scorecard and you get a free ticket to my event. Um, And maybe say that I'm offering a free consultation off of the, off of the back of this scorecard for everybody that completes their scorecard. I'm, going to review their score for them on the other side. So maybe highlight what offers you're going to to add there. Um, And then again, the only call to action on the landing page is take the scorecard. So it's all about them and we want them to get through the landing page so, so quickly, be very, very confident. And as soon as they're ready, we want them to take the scorecard. So the next area that we're looking at is questions, categories, and lead form. So the questions are the bridge between that point A and that point B, and the questions are what really creates that tension. Another way to think about your questions is what things will you need to tick off in order to understand what a customer needs, or the things that you will ask someone in a first meeting to understand how you can best work with them. So a couple of great questions. And so these are a few best practices. We wanna make sure that you're asking really simple questions that are simple and easy to answer without checking. We don't want someone having to go away and check and give them a reason to maybe potentially click off. So making the answer very, very simple, just one sentence um, and don't use too many words. Try and make it really, really simple and easy to answer. And the best ones are always yes, no, maybe. Um, So anything that they can really go through the scorecard and the quiz very, very quickly, you know, have you eaten breakfast every day this week? Yes. You know, someone's going to be able to know if they've eaten breakfast every day this week and it's yes or no. Um, and sometimes you can put a maybe or a sometimes, um, but those are those tend to be the, the best types of questions. We do have lots of options um, for you, but you could, these are the ones that we feel that um, people get through the scorecard. It's very easy for them to understand very quickly. So bad questions are really pushing towards a sale. Would you be interested in hiring a coach? Now, they know that that question isn't going to benefit them for their overall score. It's really to benefit you. And they know that you're going to sell to them off the back of this. So you can actually ask questions that highlight whether or not um, they would be interested in hiring a coach by asking and being a little bit more diplomatic on how you do it. So asking this outright is really going to turn people off. So maybe um, look at asking in a different way. Making the questions too complex so it's not something they can they can understand off the top of their head using jargon, making it too complex, trying to sound fancy. That's just not going to work. People are going to get very confused. We don't want to give them a reason to click off. We want to give them a reason to go through it super, super quickly and find it quite fun and exciting because they really want to get to the prize at the end. So an, so a, um, uh, an example of that would be Uh, Did your last meal exceed 750 calories? Most people don't know that um, and and it would take ages to work it out. So um, those are the kind of questions that we want to avoid. And also the questions that are more than a yes, no, or if you've given them like a multiple choice. If it's kind of like, but, and then they need to have an explanation um, or they're sitting there thinking, well, kind of, but we don't really want that because they it turns people off. So it needs to be really, really simple Um, a very, very easy um, to answer question. So I know what you're all thinking, how many questions? Well, the honest answer is it really depends. So score app, you can um, 
there's lots of different scorecards that you can actually do and create depending on what you need, which is an amazing part of your subscription. So if we look at cold leads, so we consider a cold lead to be somebody that you haven't had much interaction with, hasn't bought any of your products or services, doesn't really know your brand, uh, maybe hasn't been on your email list very long, or are coming from, say, a cold ad. So we would consider that to be a cold lead. Now, you would want to make sure that they get through the scorecard really, really quick so you can get to the results page where you can become highly credible. So with that, we would suggest doing between eight and 15 questions to get them through uh, really, really quickly. And one and two categories. Now we're going to talk about categories next. A warm lead is somebody who's maybe been on your email list for a little while. Uh, They maybe bought a product from you a couple of years ago. Um, They potentially might be following you on social media, but don't really interact with you. So that might be a warm lead. So they're maybe a little bit more invested in your business and your brand. Maybe 20 to 50 questions you can do. um, And that's three to seven categories roughly. And then and then a client. Now, with ScoreUp, you can actually assess your clients. Now, this is a really fantastic tool for people that want to demonstrate the value that they have brought to somebody um, or to a customer. So with a client, you can actually assess them on day one. So they take the scorecard on day one and then you can assess them again three months later, just, just for argument's sake. And that will demonstrate where they were at point A and where you've got them to at point B. And that will show the value that you bring. Now, a really great example of this and how this can even win you business is TJ Power. He won a contract. So TJ Power, he's in our our Facebook community group. Um, He won a contract with the NHS by saying that, I can actually work with your the NHS staff. I can work with all of your teams. I can assess them at the beginning um, by using this fantastic technology that I have. And by assessing them at the beginning, I can really tailor my program that, that will um, help them and be the most effective. And then three months later, I will then be able to assess them again and demonstrate um, how they have moved from point A to point B. Not only this is a great way of demonstrating the value, it's a great way of them being able to demonstrate the investment to key stakeholders. And he actually won the NHS contract off of the back of the score up technology and being able to showcase um, what he's going to be able to, to do. So categories. So categories are the grouping of the questions into key areas. So each category is a key ingredient required to achieve that desired result. So by focusing on these key areas, you will identify their strengths, their weaknesses, and of course, their opportunity. And this will also highlight the value. And and as I said right at the beginning, it's in the value that people pay for. Once they can see the value, that's when they are, are willing to become a client and willing to pay. To give you an example, back to our fitness trainer, So the categories and the areas um, that the fitness trainer potentially who is looking to give someone a fitness score. So a fitness trainer is a a fitness score is a really good scorecard for a fitness trainer. The key ingredients, the key areas, what's going to make up that fitness score is exercise, nutrition and sleep. So that is the three categories. Just to delve a little bit deeper into what we've learned so far and how this all works in in practice. So the school, so the scorecard concept for the fitness trainer is achieve your fitness goals. And the hook is discover your fitness score. So underneath the hook, underneath that fitness score, like we're going to help you to discover your fitness score, there is three categories, which is exercise nutrition and sleep. And then under each one of those categories, five questions for exercise, which could be, do you work out five times a week or more? Yes or no. Um, Nutrition, do you drink alcohol more than twice a week? Yes or no. Um, And sleep, are you sleeping eight plus hours sleep a night most nights? Yes or no. So that's just some examples of questions and maybe do five or so questions under each one of those categories. And all of those questions and with those categories are going to create your fitness score. 
Now the lead form is where we are going to collect data from your potential new lead. And there's a couple of things to think about when thinking about the lead form. So the lead form is what's gonna collect their name, their email address. Um, so this is some really useful information that we can use obviously to follow up with our, with our potential new prospect or our new lead. So we, Score App gives lots and lots of options. You can ask lots of different questions. You have lots of options to um, customize your lead form depending on your business. So you can have your, your lead form before the quiz starts or you can have it after just before the results page. Now there's pros and cons to both. So having it before means that people know right up front that they've just got to put these details in and then they can go through the quiz. You're being quite honest. Um, but whether if it's after, it gives them an opportunity to go through the quiz and then at the end they can decide whether or not that they actually want to uh, give you their details. So there's there's lots of different ways of doing it. There's lots of reasons to do it and not to do it. If you do it right at the beginning, people might be turned off. Um, and if you do it at the end, they might think, well, that's brilliant. I can go, um, I've actually answered these questions and, and I want to really know what my score is. Or if you don't put it at the beginning and you put it at the end, they might feel slightly misled. So make sure that you're testing it. Um, asking more versus less so in the fields so you can ask lots of different things name email address telephone number you can ask them you know what are their kids names if you want to so you can really ask them lots of information but there is um there there, there are pros and cons to asking them for lots of information especially right up front best practice if you can is to ask their name ask their email address and potentially a number. Um, so most best practices are just keeping it short and sweet, but we wanna give you that option because if you are selling to people in different countries in different languages and they have to have a certain, um, you need to know certain things before you can actually help them, then this is a really good, good place to do it. But best practice is to actually ask them less at this stage. We wanna get them through and answering the scorecard just so you can show off on the results page. Required versus not required. So you can actually say, well, we definitely need your name and we definitely need your email address. Now you can put your number if you want. So it's just, you know, you get those little stars next to next to it. So you can actually say whether or not that this field is a required field or if it's not a required field. So there's loads and loads of options for you to be able to customize your lead form and obviously keep testing um, as you go through and as you're building your scorecard and, and sending it out to different people to see what actually works for you and your business. So the results page and the call to action, this is the best part because this is the part on the results page where the value is delivered. And this is really where you spring into action. So for the lead, the they get their score, they get insights, tips on how to improve. So that's the prize for them. They really wanted to get their score. But for you, this is the place to really showcase your expertise, gain trust, credibility, and ultimately start to turn that lead into a sale. As you can see, the results pages are beautiful and highly valuable to those completing the scorecard. Um, on this one here, we're, we're going with the fitness trainer again. You can see that we've got a speedometer there. There's lots of different ways that you can present the actual score. So we've got the, the score right there at the top. We've got thank you for taking the scorecard, a little summary of what it actually means to um, be in the to get this score and, and to um, complete this scorecard. We've also got to change your email address up there because some people might have put a phony one in there. And once they've seen the value on this results page and they know that you're gonna email them this results, um, they might wanna change their, their email address. So that's really good for you. And then a breakdown of the categories. So this is why the categories are so are great to do. Um, you can actually break down where they scored within each category. So you've got your overall score and you can also do the individual category scores as well. Um, and just to highlight, you don't need to do categories. Them getting their score and you being able to give them feedback is also really good. So don't think you have to do all of these things, but they're definitely options and things that as you get better and as you start testing things that you can add later on down the line. 
So let's look at some best practices. So having the overall score at the very top of the page is one of the, is, is what they're waiting for. That is the prize. So don't hide the score anywhere else on the page. Having a summary of the results. So they really wanna understand what does a low, medium and high score mean? So giving them a bit of a summary on what is all of this about? What does this mean to them based on their answers? And then also providing some insights to help them improve. This really highlights your expertise but there is a sweet spot. You want to give them enough that they feel that they can go away and um, start implementing a few things, but not enough that they feel they completely do it all on their own. Now, ScoreUp has this amazing feature called dynamic content. And this is where really score app comes into its own. This is where we earn our stripes. This is where our dev team um, need a little pat on the back because con um, dynamic mode makes the scorecard hyper-personalized. So you can deliver people content based on how they answered. So if they scored low, you can deliver them content and you can provide content and insights for what that means to score low. And you can do this for the overall score. You can do this for their individual categories. So depending, they might get medium in nutrition and they might get high um, in exercise. You can deliver content completely based on their scores. It's an amazing feature. And again, you don't have to use it straight away, but we can obviously help you in a more advanced class if you need a bit of a help with that. But it is it is a fantastic feature and we're, we are super proud of this. You want to make sure that your call to action is clear and bold. I've seen so many people do an amazing scorecard and then hide at the, at the very end and say, please call me or uh, be sure that your call to action is really clear. It's really bold. We don't want you hiding right at the bottom of the page. Make sure that people can see it and it gives them next steps. They need to understand what to do next. You need to guide them where to go next. So a really bold, a really clear call to action. Don't put it down the bottom of the page. Too many people do an amazing scorecard and then go, please, can I work with you or please join my Facebook group? So really make sure that you are bold and you are confident with your call to action. Um, and then on the, the results page, you want to make sure that you're talking about you. This is your time to really shine. Let them understand who this um, amazing company was that actually created this scorecard. So make sure you've got a bio on there and a bit about what you do and why you do it. And then including a video. So with ScoreUp, you can actually create videos and implement them into your results page. Now, I would recommend actually creating a video predominantly for the scorecard itself. So you can say, thank you very much for taking the scorecard. I see that you've scored in the low category and you can obviously use dynamic mode or you can just do a general one. So this is a really good way of making it hyper-personalized, really engaging, introducing people to who you are. You can also do your call to action in the video as well. And then also adding the bonuses, the bonuses that you promised on the initial landing page, making sure that you you deliver on them, making sure it's easy for people to, to get those and to claim them. So next, we've done an amazing scorecard. We've got it all set up. We've got amazing landing pages, amazing questions, a fantastic results page, and a very clear call to action. Now we want people to actually see our scorecard. We need to make sure that we're promoting and advertising it. So a couple, we've really got lots of different ways that you can promote your school card. I mean, really it is actually endless, but I've grouped them into sort of seven different areas. So just to go through a couple of them, just to give you some ideas. Now, making sure that you put it on your website banner, um, on your landing page of your actual website. And this is a really good way of you being able to, when people come to your website, there's not many people that really fill in the contact page. People go there to discover and find out information. So this way, rather than you having hits to your website and then a couple of contacts, you then are able to get feedback from people that are actually visiting your website. Make sure you put that on the hero piece of your website and not hidden somewhere. Um, you wanna make sure that people are actually going to find it. Um, the next thing you could do is also include it into any type of email signature, any type of email marketing and direct message. A lot of people use direct messages on social media. So they will say, you know, welcome to my social media channel. Um, how about taking the scorecard? Or, you know, we've been connected on LinkedIn 
quite a while. Um, I've just created this scorecard to help you discover X. Because this is a really good way of um, interacting with people and adding value to them. So also talking about social media, making sure that you include it on all your social media profiles in the bios and any time that you speak on social media. So always having the call to action. Really any post should have some type of call to action and it should always be take your, your school card, being consistent with it um, and not just kind of putting it in your bio and expecting people to discover it, actually putting it there so they can see it and they can find it when they're consuming your content. Podcasts, videos, blogs, and books. So you can add this to any sort of video or any sort of podcast that you're doing and you can you can actually say, take my scorecard either before, during, or after. You can also include it in a book. So within a book, you can have a page saying, um, before you go any further, come offline and take the scorecard and it will help you with the rest of the book. Or you could do one right at the beginning or one right at the end. So this way, it's not so much of a broadcast because books are very, very broadcast. They're great cred credibility, um, but this is a way of actually getting some information from the people that are actually reading your book and hopefully turning them into a nice lead for you. We have so many of our score up users that are using it exceptionally well for events and workshops. Now you can use it right at the beginning of your workshop where you can send out a scorecard to understand what the audience needs, what they want, what's their desire, what's their problem that they want to solve. And then you can create the webinar or the event, whatever it is that you're doing, the presentation or your keynote, and you can actually prepare that based on the answers that the audience have given you. So it's really, really hyper-targeted for them. And then in addition to that as well, you can do it during. So score up is instantaneous. So they fill in their scorecard and the results go into your back office instantaneously. So how amazing would it be if you were presenting to people and you could get people to fill in the scorecard, then and there a really quick one, and then you could put all the results, all the data from everyone up onto the big screen. And you can also do one after, so you can understand what the audience thought, what was their feedback, um, and a really good way of being able to turn maybe an audience that isn't your own um, into actual leads for you and your business. You can obviously use paid advertising. This is a really good way of generating leads. I would recommend making sure that you test your scorecard with a cold or a warm audience before. Um, sorry, a warm audience before, making sure that you post it out on your social medias, try to get all the copyright, see what people are thinking, have a look at the conversions on your landing page before you put some money behind it. And then joint ventures and partnerships, looking at the people within your network, uh, maybe um, creating the scorecard to add to their newsletter, do a presentation to their audience and being able to use all that lovely data. Um, it's really good. It's a really um, beneficial, mutually beneficial way of um, working with people within your network. So I wanted to give you a real world example. So Critiques Over Coffee are a website. They help people create amazing websites that, that convert. So you would expect them to have beautiful, lovely branding, but they've really, really taken what we've given them um, when we said, you know, you need to promote it absolutely everywhere. And they are getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leads every single month. So they've put it on their website, as you can see in the top left corner. They've also put it in their footer, which is just below. Just in the middle there, they've actually got a pop-up. So if you leave their website, it pops up and says, take the scorecard. They've put it in their bio, on their Instagram, their LinkedIn, their Facebook, their Twitter. And they've also created really fun, really engaging ads on their Facebook page as well. And everything says, take the scorecard. And as a result, it's become highly successful as a lead generation tool for their business. My best piece of advice is when it comes to promotion is to be consistent. If you just put it in your bio or if you just post it out a couple of times, if you're, if you're kind of a bit cagey about should I do it too much, do it all the time. Be super consistent. People, um, it takes really 11 positive interactions for somebody to buy from you. So making sure that you are posting this out often and often and often um, and being consistent will make sure that people do get to see it. And over time, they're going to be like, you know, I am going to take this scorecard. I am going to take this quiz. The people that are most successful, I see them posting it absolutely everywhere. Finally, finally, 
<laughs> we have got to the most important part, which is actually turning that amazing lead into a sale. And really the fortune is in the follow-up. We really want you to maximize every opportunity as best you can so nothing really slips through the net and there's no money left on the table. And one of the best things about Score App is really being able to follow up based on the data. You know, our, again, our developers are amazing and they've created this fantastic system where you can really go in and discover what that person needs. You can look at all their answers, how they've how they've answered it in what sort of time. You can find out loads of information about this person. So you can really get products and services and give them really high quality recommendations to turn that lead into a sale. It's so powerful to be able to use the data in this way. We also have something called the seesaw technique, which highlights their strongest score, and then it shows them their weakest score. So if they score, for instance, really high in exercise, they're brilliant at exercise, but they're not very good at nutrition, you can say to someone, well, you've scored amazing, you do really, really well in exercise, but it just seems here that the big greatest area of opportunity is your nutrition, and I've got this program. Would you like to improve your score? So it's a really, really good way of being able to use the seesaw technique so um, they feel it's really, really personal to them. And that what that does is it actually improves and it bridges that gap between point A and point B. So to do that, you can obviously follow up using sales calls. You can also have custom email sequences. Now, ScoreUp has a C. You can plug in any of your CRM systems into ScoreUp, or you can use Zapier. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. But imagine this: trigger a custom email sequence. You can trigger a custom email sequence based on how they've answered or based on the score or the where they scored low, medium and high. And you can actually automate the ability to speak directly to their challenge, which is gonna be amazing. So if you scored low in nutrition, being able to get loads of helpful emails about nutrition and tips and tricks and you know ideas for going to webinars or events um, from your company would be absolutely amazing for that person. So making sure that you can create custom email sequences based on the, on the data. So score up is an important cog in the overall sales process. And to create something of value, you need to give it time. Now, although you'll get some really quick wins with score up, to create a really high value asset, you want to test, you want to test your audience, you want to make sure that um, you're improving all the time, that if your conversion rate isn't high, that you're doing things to improve, you are learning from that, and then you are improving. Test, learn and improve, it takes a bit of time, but it will create a really high value asset. And finally, we have an amazing referral program and for the rest of 2022, you get 22% of anything someone spends with us with your referral link and they get a 30 day free trial. Now under your account, you have a section that says referral link and you have your own link which you can copy and paste and send to anyone. This is trackable and then anyone that clicks that and ends up signing up with us, you automatically um, get the, re the referral and you, you obviously get the commission. So I think it takes maybe four or five people send out that and you actually get score up for free, which is amazing. We have an amazing YouTube channel as well. So there's playlists on there. We have hours, days, weeks of content on there that you can consume at any time. This is anything from breaking down all the different sections, customers telling us how they were successful, going through the actual score up back office itself and breaking each section down bit by bit. We've also got an amazing score app community. The score community are fantastic. People post questions and give um, their successes in there so people can um, so, so people can really learn. And everyone in there is really learning together. So you've got the score app team that are actually in there, but also our super users are in there that are incredibly helpful. So make sure you join the score community. They're full of business owners and professionals, and it's a really good, really good vibe. And finally, I wanted to highlight the amazing support 
support team that we've got. They're real people. Um, and we've got lots of different ways that you can connect with us. You can connect with us on email, support at scoreapp.com. We have an online live chat. We have a free 30 minute Zoom call. So if you're stuck and want to speak to one of my team, you can book in for a Zoom call. And we also have Loom reviews where we do video Loom reviews of your of your scorecard. And these ladies, Sarah on the left, Lee in the middle and Carla on the right, are absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for coming to Set Up and Score and congratulations for joining Score Up. I look forward to seeing your scorecards in our Facebook community and hearing all about your successes.